Okay, what else have we done that hasn't been particularly successful in uh, risk stratifying patients? Well, these are the, the tests that are currently available to us in risk stratifying patients. So if we have a patient where we suspect ha has coronary disease, and we'll send them on to a non-invasive test. And this is actually a very important publication, I think data that's very, very important to look at and understand, and that is the positive predictive value of simple stress ECGs, thallium uh, stress test, and echo stress. And what, is, what this is showing you is that based on the symptoms, whether you have definite angina, probable angina, non-specific chest pain, you can see the, pro, the, the positive predictive value. So if you've got definite angina, obviously your positive predictive value is high. You're looking at 85% or above. But if your symptoms are now more probable or non-specific, you can see that the, the positive predictive value of these tests diminishes significantly. So and what we're saying is in the female patient population, we're looking at these types of symptoms, so many more patients with probable or nonspecific chest pain. So the positive predictive value of these tests is, is just much lower for female patients. On the flip side of this, when you look at the false negatives of these tests, so these are patients that have negative tests but actually turn out to have coronary disease by angiography, you can see that there are very high uh, false negatives in, in these populations, specifically patients with definite angina. So if you take, and we're looking at female patients here specifically, if you do an exercise ECG, simple uh, exercise treadmill test, the test comes back positive, but that patient has typical angina symptoms, there's a 57%, close to 60% false negative rate, okay? If your symptoms are more uh, vague and probable angina or nonspecific, of course, the false negatives drop off. But I think this is important to think about this as we now look at the guidelines. So these are the guidelines that were put in place and published back in 2005. And what's a little bit disturbing about this is that simple exercise ECG is, is basically the leading test that's recommended for, for female patients that have a normal baseline ECG. And the other thing that's a little bit disturbing is that the uh, recommendations are to do these tests and follow this algorithm based on uh, a, a pretest likelihood that is intermediate or high. So patients that either have atypical or typical chest pain syndrome should follow this algorithm. So if you've got a normal um, resting ECG, you should go down the regular exercise treadmill testing. And only if you've got an abnormal ECG do you go down the road of a non-invasive uh, imaging test. And I've just shown you how poorly these, these tests actually predict um, coronary disease. So I don't think it's that surprising to see the results of what was just published in the New England Journal of Medicine that the vast majority of patients that are now being sent to diagnostic angiography really have non-obstructive disease. 